and stream. <clears throat> okay, uh, we are live now on uh, social media. So uh, yes. thank you again for being with us. Uh, I hope really this session will be uh, an amazing session. I'm, I'm pretty sure it will be an amazing session. Uh, we prepared for it for a while and uh, Hassan is, uh, is really an amazing uh, person. Let's start in this way and uh, of course an amazing presenter and of course an amazing white hacker so uh, one of the most important things today is this is uh, october Cybersecurity months so we plan this to be part of this uh, awareness uh, month of how you can protect yourself uh, and how can you uh, you know uh, learn how is how is it happening? What is the background of hackers? How do they work? Uh, what happens in the background? What really, you know, the technical stuff? Uh, it's amazing, you know, you, the, the way it's going to be showcased today. So uh, Hassan is preparing. Meanwhile, uh, I just need a few seconds and uh, we will start by some introductions of what we will be having uh, within uh, this session and what we will be having within the next also weeks. And uh, let me uh, tell everybody that I will be in Dubai next week. Uh, also, I will be going live from Jitex Dubai uh, with many daily, uh, you know, small sessions and episodes with many people that we will be meeting. Also, we will be having a live session from there. Uh, they, we have two scheduled, one on Monday, one on Tuesday, and of course, our Crypto Talks Wednesday is also from Dubai. Hopefully, it will be also from Jitex. So there's a lot of things happening. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, let's go into the decks and then... So welcome again to Season 4 uh, DX Talks. We are very excited for this. Uh, I'm your host, Rudy Shushani. Um, I'm a founder of DX Talks, member of uh, Forbes Technology Council, keynote speaker, mentor, specialized in digital transformation, cybersecurity, and governance. We will be sharing uh, with you also um, links for our WhatsApp. So if you want to join our WhatsApp group, uh, you are most welcome to join and then be updated on the latest. Also, we will be sharing our host, our guest uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, and social media. Uh, please do follow him and support him. Uh, we have a milestone that we reached uh, two weeks ago, which is 100K. Uh, thanks to you and thanks to everybody. Uh, we are growing and growing uh, every day. So again, also thanks to our partners. Mostly they are new partners. Some of them, we're trying to build partnerships to really build this ecosystem we have some exciting news hopefully we will announce them more uh, in uh, in jitex with more partners and more initiatives uh, and we also we need to announce two things two awards we actually got for the show uh, that we are uh, top part of the top 100 uh, 2021 diligent in modern governance and digital transformation innovation uh, i was able to get this award due to the show and thank you for uh, everybody that put their trust in us. And secondly, uh, also we have another one, which is uh, top 50 uh, leaders and uh, transformation also. That is another uh, award that we really, really, really uh, amazingly uh, appreciative. 
Secondly, our uh, next week will be Crypto Talks Wednesdays on October 13. Uh, it will be live, as we said, from Jitex with Tay. So you to know more uh, what's happening on the crypto market. So as we mentioned before, we will try to also do a meetup in, in Jitex. So if you are in Dubai, uh, make sure to connect with me. And uh, that way uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, talk more and get together. And we will go live, of course. Some housekeeping before we start with Hassan. Uh, please mute your microphone at all time. <clears throat> you can ask any related question using the chat box. You can raise your hand during the Q&A and we'll try to take a couple of Q&As uh, and make it as much as we can interactive. Uh, some polls will be running during the show, feedback surveys. Also, if you need a certificate of attendance, please make sure uh, to fill the form that we will be sending and we will send you a certificate of attendance uh, by tomorrow. This session, of course, will be recorded and streamed for uh, replaying live later on so you can uh, check it out. So as we said, Cybersecurity Month, this is the month of cybersecurity awareness. And today, Hassan will walk us how and why and where and all of the details of how hackers think and what do they do. So let's welcome uh, Hassan to the stage. Uh, I'm really, really excited. Just let me finish this. Uh, So, okay, thank you. Hello. Thank <laughs> you for, you know, for being with us. We are 32 now. Uh, I'm super excited. I know many faces. I've seen many faces. Just trying to locate uh, Hassan to pinpoint and make him. Uh, here we go. Okay, Hassan, Hackerji, welcome. <laughs> To the stage, uh, I'm very excited, uh, you know, to, to host you today and uh, for you to be uh, part of this. So, if you mind, if you don't mind walking us through, if you don't mind also stopping sharing, so we can see you first, and then okay. we will take it from there. Okay. Hello, hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day, a great uh, week, great month. It's Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And uh, me and Rudy were talking a lot about what to present to you guys, something that would add value to your professional career. And at the same time, make it a little bit interesting for to people to see, to debunk some common misconceptions about hacking, because with all the craziness that's happening out there, you see movies like, I don't know, uh, The Core or Mr. Robot or whatever. And people think like hacking is like... And I got to the machine. So we're going to do something uh, which is called a Try Hack Me Challenge. Usually, personally, I don't do a lot of these challenges. I only do the ones that are interesting or the ones that are have not been solved before. Because it's just a good mental exercise to see what you can do and eventually fail. <laughs> so for me personally, I'm going to try to do something related to web applications. And uh, the difficulty here, it says it's medium. I'm not sure how this is going to be playing out uh, today, but I'm going to try to give you as much information as possible. I'm going to try to make it as, as interactive as possible. And I definitely want you guys to participate. I want you guys to be present. I want you guys to write your questions, maybe make some comments, maybe do everything. I want you guys to be engaged because the more you are engaged, the better the quality of this session will be. The more questions you ask, there's no stupid questions. There's only people who are afraid of asking questions. So make sure you ask questions regardless of how accurate. If you know, if you don't know, just go for it. One last thing I want to say before I start. And uh, basically, I want to talk about Try Hack Me even more. You can always go to tryhackme.com. Uh, there's another website called... Uh, Hack the Box, where you can actually sign up and give it a shot and try different techniques. 
And if you're stuck at something, you always find some really cool people that will help you out. Uh, so yeah, it's it's basically a really cool initiative that people are actually implementing recently and it's going out really fine and you can actually scratch your brain and doing a bunch of things. Right now, I'm gonna, and before I do anything, I wanna thank Rudy. Uh, Rudy has always been a really fun relationship with me and you. We always like talk from time to time. We always participate in different events and we're always planning on how to bring the best content to everyone. And this is why I love the X Talks and being on them because they actually provide you with the most professional environment that we can find in Lebanon to actually discuss these topics and be in the forefront of everything related to cybersecurity, blockchain, and digital transformation. So for that, I thank you, my friend. Now, we go on, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. I'm gonna guide you through what I'm gonna do and we're gonna do some configuration just to be able to go right and dive right through it. Thank you, Hassan. I'm uh, always uh, appreciative of our relationship uh, and hopefully uh, it will be for many years and decades to come. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so now I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. But can you maximize Great. it? It's maximized, no? No. Same as before. It's same as before. Let me, it's on full screen here. Let me just stop sharing and go share it again, I guess, to see how am I going to do this. Uh, okay. Is it working now? Same thing. No, it's not full screen. It's not full screen. Do you mind just pressing the maximize on this window? Uh, there's no window on my okay. with us today. Share it on your uh, social media. It's still not in full screen. Uh, so we can have an impact more. So more people can, uh, you know, uh, learn from this and try to benefit uh, us all. Is it working now? Uh, no. No. What? I just said the exact same thing. Um, let me just see if... You are sharing the screen, I know. Um, it's okay, we can see now. It's much better if you can actually, you are, oh, no, no, I know, I know. Is the, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is the machine full screen, bro? No. Like, is it working now? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, now, now I got it. F11 and then the floor is yours. Yes. Okay, so this is Try Hack Me. Uh, as I was saying, uh, website, different techniques, different, uh, different ways of approaching certain cybersecurity challenges. Uh, today, this challenge is called Web App Sec 101. In this room, we will walk through how testing an application from the perspective of a hacker or a penetration tester, which is yours truly. For the description, our basic description, we have like walking through the application, we have like establishing a methodology. We have some questions on authentication, like what's the admin username, password, we have like cross-site scripting, which is XSS. We have a little bit of, yes. Hassan, we have English speakers. So. Oh yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm going to try to go back to English then. And we have some injection questions that we probably need to relate to. And we have some logic flaws, which are probably the most difficult stuff that you're gonna be looking forward in any website or any pen test because they're not always straightforward. That's why they call them logical flaws or logic flaws. So I'm gonna start my machine right now. And uh, usually, it gives me instructions on how to download a VPN, I guess. Let's hope it works flawlessly. So we download the configuration files. Okay. So now I have to connect 
to dot cloud sudo su to actually go into admin mode on Kali because it will not allow you to do anything otherwise. So we go open VPN, minus minus config. I think I have it somewhere here. Yes, it's connecting. So we'll just wait to see how everything is gonna play out. We have like around 30 seconds. If you have any questions before I start, please make sure you pop them in the chat. Meanwhile, because there's a lot of moments that we're probably gonna be waiting for something to happen. So mm -hmm. it will be cool to actually talking to you guys, meanwhile. So let me see if it's here. Will you be sharing the workflow with us? Of course, I will definitely be very keen on not just doing the challenge because the point of this session is not me telling you, look, this is how good I am. Look, I'm just doing this and this and this. I wanna show you why I'm doing it. I wanna show you how I'm doing it. And I wanna make sure you grasp the best idea of how everything works. So usually if I wanna do this challenge, uh, since it's probably medium difficulty, it's probably gonna take me around 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the uh, the tricks. I have no idea. We've been having this discussion with Rudy if I got stuck on a certain point. So let's hope that doesn't happen today, but I'm gonna to try to be as slow as possible to try to maximize the benefit for you guys. Yeah, that's the most important part that we discussed with Hassan. Uh, you guys we want you to learn all right this is something maybe foreign to some some are uh, already familiar with some of the terms some of the workflows and so on uh, this exercise is uh, somehow as you can see it's based on tasks so you can have task one task two task three which hasn't already passed through them so if you joined us now and then you are lost please uh, raise your hand and then tell me uh, so we can you know help you more the more you ask, the more you interact with us, uh, you know, this is a two-way thing. It's not a one-way, as, as Hassan said. Let's have this as, uh, as very interactive. Where can I find the recording later? We will share okay. it on the, on the uh, WhatsApp link. And of course, later on, on the emails and uh, social media, of course. Okay. So uh, basically now I have an IP address. I'm connected to the Try Hack Me VPN virtual private network. And now basically I have access to this. Usually when companies come to me and tell me, look, we want you to pen test a certain website or a certain document or any sort of penetration testing, they always tell me these are the IP addresses. So we have three approaches in penetration testing. We have like purple box where you know a little bit, we have black box testing where they just provide you with an IP address and they don't tell you any information. Or you have like white box approach where they tell you this is all the technologies we have. This is everything we have in our system. These are our APIs. These are our endpoints. You have unlimited access. Try to find things faster. For me today, I'm going to go with a little bit of a black box-ish uh, approach. And I'm going to treat it as a black box-ish approach because I think it would make you understand more and it will fulfill the purpose of this session even more. So usually when we have any IP address, the first thing I do as a penetration tester is I go for an NMAP. So we have like 10.10.40.146. What NMAP does, it basically it scans for open ports and it's somehow immediate right now. It scans for open ports and it gives me a little bit of information about what are the things functioning on this server. So on the server we have an SSH port opened. So we can basically go for SSH 10.10.40.146. Uh, .10 and like, we can just try to see, okay, it's permission denied. So basically have an application running on port 80. So we should theoretically be able to access it in the browser. Yep. There you go. And now we have the wacopico.com. Yeah, don't ask. Hackers have weird stuff with namings. Trust me, I'm called Hackerjit. So 
yeah, wacopico.com is the website we're going to be testing today. And basically, let's go to try and hack me to go through what they want us to do. So this room is a small, vulnerable web application in the OWASP Juice Shop. We looked at how some basic vulnerabilities work in this room. We'll talk through the methodology approach of testing web application. As an ethical hacker, you need to test the web application from the perspective of an attacker. We'll be using the mindset to establish a strategy to look for weaknesses. So yes, I have read that. Thank you for the not so helpful information. Now we're gonna go through something called walking through the application. Walking through the application is basically identifying, discovering the application furthermore, trying to understand what you wanna do from it. Before I read everything, I always look at the questions. So one of the question is what version of Apache is being used? What language was used to create the website? And what version of this language is actually used? So these are very simple questions. Uh, of course, some people would say, oh, that's a challenge. These shouldn't be simple. But for some people who don't know where to look, yeah, it might take some time. But now there's like a million way to actually get this information. I'm going to go with two ways, maybe three ways. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So before anything, I did a landmark scan, if you remember. And I got these information right here. So... First things first, I want to understand a little bit more about the server before I actually go and dive into it. So for me, what I like to do is run and map, but a little bit more specific. So we go with SV, uh, SV tag to get the versions of all the different stuff that are, at, that are uh, functioning on the server. We go with SC because I want to run some scripts that are built in within and map that could help me potentially detect vulnerabilities on the server. And I will go with stack A to get the OS version and all of that stuff. And then I'll just put the IP address at 140.146 and hopefully this works and it doesn't explode in my face. And as I mentioned, people have a misconception that everything is immediate. Yeah, cybersecurity doesn't operate within the immediate realm. Cybersecurity operates within the understand what you want to do, understand how you want to do it, and wait for all of the results. Can you increase the terminal terminal font? Yeah, for sure, bro. Okay, just a second because my terminal got stuck apparently. Okay, hold on. I'm just going to repeat the last one. Let me just uh, uh, okay. Is it working now? Is it better for you guys? Yes, yes. So, it's beautiful. okay. Thank you. So I'm gonna go for the command one more time, and you're gonna be shocked because all of the information are gonna be so huge. So you're probably gonna be bombazzled. But let's see how we can do this. So yeah, I'm waiting. Again, there's a lot of waiting when it comes to scanning. There's a lot of waiting when it comes to brute forcing. There's a lot of waiting when it comes to trying to identify different aspects of a web application. Just remember and keep in mind, I'm doing this by default to every IP address that I have. Now it's done. And there's like a gazillion thing that I need to look into. And if you notice the first question, what version of Apache is being used? What language was used to create website? And what's the version? of that language. So I go up and I start reading the result of my expanded Nmap scan. So as I said, host key, this is the public stuff. I don't really looking for it. And we have port 80 open. There's a web application on it. It's HTTP and we have the Apache version immediately. So it's 2.4.7. And because usually when I see PHP ESSID, I usually go that it's probably going to be using somewhere in language of a PHP, something related to that. So what we know for uh, so far, we have Apache that's definitely running on the server. We also have a bunch of other stuff that are being executed here. And basically we have like, because we're on a private network, there's not too many hops. So the trace route is very short. So all of these IPs 
basically they're not applicable here. So for the first part, what's the version of Apache being used? It's 2.4.7. So let's see if this is the right answer, 2.4.7. And we click on submit. Yeah, this is the first correct answer. And what's the language that was used to create the website? Again, when we see PHP S E S S I D, it's probably going to be PHP because ESSID and PHP ESSID is the authentication method that PHP uses most of the time. So I'll just go with PHP. And it's the correct answer again. And what version of this language is being used? Now, here, I don't think. Uh, the M map will actually give us this answer, but there's of course other ways to do it. Let me clear my terminal here. One of the ways that we can do it is basically go for something called curl. Like curl is a very nice interface or very nice command on Linux that will allow us to fetch. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking that way because uh, I basically have the chat and the, the screen right there. So we have curl that basically can fetch us the information requested from the server judging by the post request that we specify. So in order for me to understand what's happening, I'm gonna go for curl and I'm gonna go with stack S to actually go for the support. I'm gonna go my like minus D uh, header dot, not just header like, oh header because I'm actually getting the header. Uh, of the IP address that I have on the server, which is 10.10.40.146. And I want to paste it within like, I don't know, uh, H or dev, whatever. Okay. Null, maybe. Okay. Now it works. So now I just go for catting header.txt. And basically I have the post request reply, which is Apache 2.4.7 powered by PHP 5.5.9. And I'm gonna just I'm just showing you this just to show you there's different stuff, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do it. Like 5.5.9. For me, this is the easiest way, but you can always choose your poison when it comes to cybersecurity. There's no really one way to do anything. Uh, no, I need to go for 5.5.9. And yeah, that's the correct answer here. So I answered all of these. Like the other easiest way to do this is using Burp Suite. Burp Suite is probably the best friend of any cybersecurity researcher, cybersecurity penetration tester, but bounty hunter and just a regular guy who just likes to see things and inspect things. So Burp Suite comes in free in a community edition uh, when it comes to Kali Linux. Uh, it has a beautiful interface. It used to be an ugly interface and now it's absolutely gorgeous. You have so many options here and I don't think it's within the scope of this day that we're gonna actually go into details. Maybe later on Rudy will have something just purely on Burp Suite. Yeah, uh, uh, I just want you to explain for those who doesn't know, uh, Kali. Yeah. What is the power of Kali Linux? Because some people think uh, it's about tools only. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, wh why uh, why did you use Kali? But just to you know, give them an okay. Input? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, is there anyone in the chat that actually uses Kali? Just in general. Okay, Khaled. Okay. Great. We have a bunch of people, Khadija. Okay, apparently we have two out of, I'm not seeing the number. We have two people. Okay, now it's growing fast. Nice. So I'm just going to give you a small introduction because Kali is basically, you basically, oh, you own it as we speak. That's epic. What we have with Kali, it's very similar to Windows. Like in Windows, you have Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 9. Again, it's Microsoft products, so I'm not really interested. But when it comes to Linux, you have something called distributions. And in Linux distributions, each distribution is actually made to fulfill a certain purpose. Like if you wanted to go for an alternative of Microsoft for your daily life, if you're not really a someone who's basically, yeah, I will definitely spell it out right now. 
uh, distributions or distros. This is what we call Kali. This is what we call Linux in general. So if you're looking for something that would behave like a normal window or whatever, you go for Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-O. I'm just going to show you a picture of the Ubuntu desktop. It's a beautiful desktop, Ubuntu desktop. So yeah, this is Ubuntu. It's basically for your everyday, uh, if you want actions, it's really cute. It looks nice. Everything is fastly accessible, but it's not for cybersecurity. Uh, you have something called CentOS, which or CentOS, which I think it's discontinued now, but it was one of my favorite back in the day. Uh, it was very minimalistic, very simple, nothing on the desktop, just absolutely abstract. This is your operating system. You know, there's no stop button. It might sound weird to some of you who use Microsoft, but again. And there is Kali Linux. Why do we have different distros? Because depending on the need, Linux is very powerful. Depending on your need, you would create your own distribution of a Linux operating system. So once we get to the point where as cybersecurity started progressing, we had the urge and the need to actually have a distribution for cybersecurity. Why do we need a distribution for cybersecurity? Because it's, we use a lot of tools. We use a lot of scripts. We use a lot of different stuff that we can integrate within our cybersecurity lifecycle. And if we wanna do it on Ubuntu, we're gonna have to download around six, 7,000 script to be fully implemented and to integrate it. And it's gonna take a lot of time. So some brilliant people came out with an operating system called Backtrack at first, uh, Linux. Backtrack was, it's Kali Linux, Kali. Backtrack basically was the first cybersecurity Linux distribution. And it looked kind of like the movies if like that's what I think, Rudy, this is where I think it came from. The movie theat theatrical <laughs> approach to cybersecurity because I mean, just look at it. it. It looks it looks like something out of a movie. This is the original, original cybersecurity distribution. And then as we progress, we went into Kali Linux and uh, which I'm operating on today. I don't know why I'm showing you, it's kind of funny. But we got to Colonist. Colonist has come preloaded with a lot of tools that you would definitely, definitely need in order to perform some cybersecurity tasks, some different automation, uh, some different uh, pen testing. And of course you can always add different script from GitHub. So it's a very well-built operating system and very well-maintained operating system. I'm not going to dare to say it's the most secure thing in the world because there's nothing called security. But it's just perfect for someone who is actually very interested in cybersecurity. You can just go in and mess around with Kali Linux, put it on a virtual machine if you have a good computer, and you can just enjoy yourself. So this is why we choose Kali Linux as an operating system. And in Kali, basically, we have... Burp Suite comes in preloaded instead of downloading it and all of that and all of that and blah, 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 blah. So we have all the tools that we need. So I'm gonna jump back and hopefully that answers your question. That was a really detailed answer I get. Yes, thank you, but uh, okay, very detailed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I try my best because it's always, uh, I'd rather say it once and people would go to your video and watch it so they don't forget it. Yeah, thank you. We're running a poll uh, about what do you think of this session so far? Please do answer it and give, uh, you know, some support to, uh, to Hassan. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So basically now we go to Burp Suite, which is, again, it's called Burp Suite. It has nothing to do with Burp. Uh, it's basically a proxy. What's a proxy? A proxy is, let's suppose I'm talking to Rudy and uh, me as a hacker, I wanna understand what's happening between Rudy and Hassan or Rudy and Hakirji or Rudy and my alter ego, you name it. So what I need in this case, I need someone to sit in the middle and intercept everything between Rudy and Hassan so I can read it. This is exactly what Burp Suite does. 
Birth rate is, uh, there's there's a lot of alternatives. There's, you have a WASP zap. For me, it's a good tool, but it's, I'm not a big fan of it because it's so noisy and it doesn't give you the pay capabilities of actually doing pen tests the way uh, Burp Suite does. So we have a proxy system here. We click on open browser because I need to go back to the challenge, guys. I still have like a little bit of time, I think, left on it. So we need to go back to the challenge. Uh, we have this built-in browser within Burp Suite. And once we click on open browser, this beautiful thing pops up. And I want to open 10.10.40.146. 10.10.40.146. .10 Immediately, as you can see, we have this request that I initialized. It's gonna go from my computer, go to the server, ask it for Wiko Pico, and then return it to me. And right now I'm intercepting everything that's happening between me and try and hack me. So I send it to a repeater. A repeater is basically a custom post request, get request sender that would allow me to manipulate data and send it to the server and study the behavior on the reply. So once I click on send, immediately I will notice that I have the website, it's returning the website back to me uh, with, alongside some of the really funky PHP codes. And as you can see, if you notice with the curl command, I got this reply. And once I use burp suite and the repeater, I got just about the same reply, but I only took the upper part of it. So if you wanna know the PHP version, it's 5.5.9. So this is an alternative way to actually do it. Hopefully that answers the first part, but now I'm just teaching you techniques because I don't really care about the challenge as a challenge. I just want you to understand different techniques. Now we go for establishing methodology. We answered all of these three questions correctly. So let me see if I can add one over here. Oh, I can, cool. Cool. <laughs> uh, basically, now that we've walked through the application and know the functionality and technologies, how do we actually test it? And there are two particular ways of testing web application for security vulnerabilities. The first way is by going through every page and testing the functionality that would involve going through every page of the application, depending on the functionality. Or you can basically scan the page, blah, blah, blah. The second way is breaking down the testing into different stages, but not limited to authorization, authentication, injection, client side controls, and application logic. Okay, Honey, uh, I just want to pause a little bit because this is probably among all of the other parts, this is probably the most important part because this is gonna be the way you're gonna approach this challenge. And for me, you need to understand this part very well. In cybersecurity, or let's we have, I'm gonna go straight to the Waco Pico. We have this web page. We have so many different kinds of attacks. So we need to come up with a plan on how to approach it. So we have a create an account function. We have a checkout sample user. Like let's, if we click here, we have like a bunch of different things. We need to log in, we need to recent, we need to go and see different pictures and we need to be logged in. So. For us personally, everything that allows us to make a post request or input to the server, this has to be tested. One more thing, we need to check the upload functionality and we're gonna have to test that as well. We're gonna have to test out the different directories links that are appearing on top. And we have something that's very fishy here, which called the send a file. We're gonna have to test it and we have a search bar. Usually I'm just gonna do something that's not related to challenge when Ever I go into any website in the world, I always do this. Okay, basically XSS cross-site scripting is very interesting vulnerability, very dangerous vulnerability and very nice vulnerability. And this one is vulnerable for it. What happens is if I write Hakirji here, you can see that pictures that are tagged as a hacker, you know, pictures found. And this right here, the thing that I've written is being translated right here within the result. Sometimes, and developers make that mistake a lot. They need to sanitize these inputs. They need to understand that they cannot allow special characters to be included within 
the search bar or the input fields because it would alter the behavior of the page. I'm gonna show you how. Hakirji, if I add a B as in a bold tag in HTML, so right now I look at it and it's translated into bold Hakirji. I like the bold Hakirji because it tells me that I can basically write any HTML script here and it will automatically be executed here. So let me try something a little bit more advanced. Alert document dot cookie, and I close the tags. And now I have my cookie and it's displaying this cookie for me. So immediately I know we have a vulnerability that's an XSS vulnerability. It will execute, and this is the next step of the question, Tamir. Uh, because I have like script alert, zero, I can basically execute any HTML, JavaScript, whatever you wanna call it, tag here. So basically it's very powerful and there's a lot of different types of XSS. I'm gonna go through them later. Let's go back now and basically I'm gonna need to be testing all of that, authorization and authentication. Who knows the difference between authorization and authentication? Does anyone in the chat know? Don't Google it. Okay, I don't think anyone knows. Okay, I'm just gonna give you a really quick demo on how basically uh, it happens. Authentication is who is this user? Like we want to authenticate him, want to understand who is this person? Authorization is basically what is this user capable of doing? So authentication is, okay, this guy is an admin. He is authorized to do one, two, three. These are the difference between uh, authentication and authorization. And if you wanna go for authentication, you have a million ways to authenticate. You have the GWT token, you have the OAuth, you have the PHP SSID, you have the Facebook really gigantic algorithm for authentication, which is super complicated even for me. You have so many different stuff. What we do usually, we study the authentication mechanism and try to break it. And then we go into the authorization and see what permissions can we break. Injection is basically trying to inject something in places that's not supposed to be executing or injection. Client side controls, which is, let's suppose, and I'm gonna just show you this really fast. Let's suppose if I wanna go open my beautiful proxy again, and I'm gonna go for, I think I already have it opened. Yeah, I already have it opened. So let's suppose you have some mechanisms here that stops me from writing this. This, what we call client side restrictions. So whatever I type here locally, if I type this, this will be deleted automatically, let's suppose. What happens is, if because it's not implemented on the network side or the server side, just gonna click on cancel here and search. Okay, now I'm lost. Never mind. Never mind. And um, uh, there's another browser extension. Yeah, there you go. Now, I can basically, because locally it's not allowing me to add these special characters, but I can simply add them within the request. So I can just send it to repeater, do whatever I want, script alert, whatever, 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 and just send it to the server and it will execute. So now we're just covering really fast concepts that I want you to really understand. This is way bigger, I think, than the scope of the challenge, but I just wanna give you those informations. Authentication involves testing mechanism, brute force, session management, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm gonna go blind here. I'm not gonna do what I usually do with trying to complicate my life. I'm just gonna go with the default approach. Basically, let's suppose I wanna test for the credentials of, I think because we have users log in, we have username and password. We need to test what the hell could possibly be the username and the password here. So let me just go back to my beautiful browser and let me drop everything here and just go to the main menu. 
and forward and intercept is on. So I want to log in. So I send this to the repeater just so I can inspect it later on. I recommend you to send every post request to the repeater just to keep a track of what's happening and what basically you are facing. We have like username and password. There are a few things that I can test like Hakirji, Hakirji, and I click on login. As you can see here, you have like Hakirji, Hakirji username and password. I wanna test it a little bit further. Hassan, do you mind also uh, zooming on this uh, a little bit? Uh, uh, the problem know? with Burp is it doesn't have a Okay. Zoom in possibility. I'm not sure if it's I okay. can it's just. Okay. It's okay. I'm gonna just try to check it out really fast. Um, Windows detach proxy. Hopefully, it would like make it a little bit bigger. No. Do we have anything here that would probably give us an indication? Nope. So let me just look really far with the user options because there has to be something display. Oh, okay, font size, 40. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, hopefully this would work out fine. It's gonna be buggy. Oh, really? You need to fix that burp suite. Okay, now, uh, yeah, I don't think there's a way to actually like, it's okay, it's okay. Just actually uh, change font. Oh, um, maybe, oh, uh, HTTP message display. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one. Okay, I think now it should be, yeah, there you go. Is it better now? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. So uh, we have like username and password and we go and to the repeater and we try to send it. And what's the reply we're gonna get? Let me take this a little bit of all. Send. Response. Um, I'm just gonna check the response really fast. The user password combination you have entered is invalid. So what we do, we do a lot of brute forcing here. And what brute forcing is, is probably testing a lot of combinations related to uh, different combination of username and password. Like let's suppose we have this and I want to just play around with this. I want to test for matching pairs. Uh, payloads, I will add the default ones like admin, I'm then admin, uh, localhost. These are basically the default stuff. There is a large word list where you can find online. Uh, if you go to Google, just put on GitHub word list. I'm just going to do it right now, really fast, just to show you. Word list, GitHub. So you will have like security list is probably number one thing that you can possibly go for. Yeah, Rocky is one of them. Uh, so you have like a bunch of stuff like passwords and you have like different default credentials, Dutch words, English words, Chinese words, you name it. You will always find something related to it. So I'm just gonna try out these stuff and maybe uh, Cisco, Cisco, because some people are just trying to do so, Tomcat for Apache, whatever. And if I start my attack, I'm looking here and I'm getting the same replies for everything. So I did something wrong here, this guy. I need to add another position here. And I think, yeah, clear. Add, add, and payloads, I have these, simple list. Let me see if it works. I don't know why it's changing here. I think I should use sniper. I'm just not gonna go through the hassle. I'm just gonna try them manually. But this is how you basically brute force them. Uh, payload set, no, it's basically, I don't want them to be custom iterators. I want them to be brute forces. No, I don't want them to be, I want a simple list. Yeah, I was doing a try it. I don't know what's the, probably the issue here, but I'm just gonna go with 
options try to go for i think it what's happening is it's basically taking the first part and disregarding the second part so i'm going to change it to two here but i don't have two apparently so payload processing uh match and replace i just don't don't overthink about it i'll just do it manually but because I have the pro version, the pro version doesn't give me that. Basically, it's easier. So we go for admin or amden at first, and then amden. And basically, we need to disable our proxy. We have wrong passwords. We go for Cisco, Cisco. There's wrong password. We go for admin, admin. No wrong password. Let's try this again. Wrong password again. So we have a bunch of users here that's basically giving me it's the wrong password. What should I do next? What do you think I should do next, guys? Let me see if I can do like this thing here. Does it exist? No. Okay, nice. Admin. Oh, nice. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rudy, Shaif, let's build up the live challenges. I know it's live. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's technically live. Yeah, it was a lucky shot. I just tried it really fast and it worked. So what happened was, uh, in the challenge, if you remember, they asked me about, let me go back to the challenge really fast. Where's my browser? Yo, okay. So they asked me, what is the admin username? What I was trying is the login, which is a user's login panel. So I was like, if I'm looking for admin, perhaps I should put admin and login.php. And once I did that, I was taken to the admin, admin area. So from the admin area, I just do the same task, like Cisco, Cisco, uh, admin, p at sswzord, which is a complex password, admin, admin. Okay, there you go. We have our first flag, which is welcome to the awesome admin panel admin. And how much do you see actually uh, engineers and server admins configuring systems and putting them online? Default. Default. Okay, let me, let, 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 me put it, let me put it into perspective. The biggest hack that ever happened in history was the... Uh, Fire Eye slash Solar Winds hack. Remember, Rudy? Yep, that was a couple of months back. That was a couple of months back. The main reason for that hack was Solar Winds had a server with the username admin and the password admin1234. So half of the planet was hacked because of a default password. So we see it a lot, and it's always the best thing you can ever imagine to go for default passwords. These are quick wins that will guarantee to you a quick access to the actual server. So are you guys following me right till now? Can we see some thumbs up if you don't mind? Yeah, that's one, that's two, that's three, four, yeah. Uh, Prince, you raised your hand. We can take a quick question if you want. Yeah, let's go. Prince. Oh, this is a high oh, so, five. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, yes, please. Yes, please. All right. Hi, Prince. Hi. Tell How me. are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. Okay. Um, actually, it's not a question. I was trying to make sure I'm I'm also available, and then unfortunately, I typed the raise hand. No problem, no problem. Thank you. Ah, no problem, bro. No problem. It's good to hear your voice, though, man. You have a nice voice. Are you from Nigeria? <laughs> this is no, please. What... <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Ghana. That's... Oh, yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure to meet you, bro. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, Prince so, uh, is, is really famous. He's from the Chamber of Commerce uh, in Ghana. So, uh... oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. I I hope you're enjoying it so far and. Let's go with the next step. Now we have basically the admin admin. Uh, let me click on complete here because I don't want to look like an idiot. Okay. 
uh, we have the admin username and the password is also admin. Uh, submit and submit, and now we have two correct answers. Um, we have a quick one. Why did you use a VPN after logging to Kali? Because try and hack me, uh, basically this right here, and this is a very good concept. I'm sorry, Rudy, but these are all good concepts that I need to probably highlight uh, because not so many people actually goes through them. Uh, we have something called private IP sets and public IP sets. Private IP sets are like 192.168.star.star. Star, that star. I'm just going to like display them at the magic active one so that I don't just rewrite them. Private IP blocks. So we have, I don't know why it's tilted. I think because I'm using like Google in Arabic for some weird reason, it's in Arabic. Okay. And this is what we call private networks. Okay. Seriously? Okay. We have three classes of private networks. We have like 10.0.0.0 till 10.255.255.255, which is a huge combination of IP addresses. We have 172.16 till 172.31, star, star. And we have 192.168.star.star, .star .star, which is .255.255. So basically all of these, you will not find a single address on the internet that basically uses one of these. These are all internal IP addresses for the companies to use. And if you noticed, my IP address here, the IP address of the actual challenge is 10.10.40.146, which actually falls within the internal network of Try and Hack Me. So I use the VPN basically to connect to Try and Hack Me so that I can access this IP because this is not accessible from the internet. Hopefully that answers the question in a brief, interesting QD way. So what is the name of the cookie that can be manipulated? It's a stupid question because all cookies can be manipulated, but I'm just gonna try and, and see what they mean by cookies and manipulated. So uh, let's go for inspect elements here. In the inspect element, I use this a lot because sometimes you have a lot of stuff that are active on the website and it's always fun to look at the code in whom the website is actually written in. So I'm just gonna write a quick script like a document dot cookie. And okay, now I have some really interesting values here, but let me tell you what alert document the cookie means. Every website, once you log in, you will have a cookie generator for you. And in order to have the authentication, this is your ticket to use the website. This cookie holds your information and what's your authentication level. So since I'm logged in as admin, I can display the admin cookie. So alert document dot cookie. And now I will get like, I have session equal to three and PHP SSID is equal to this really ugly string. So what I can manipulate basically is probably gonna be the session because if you manipulate this, you probably get logged out immediately. So the session is equal to three. And once you see this, you always tell there is a problem because there's always a billion layer of encryption happening on this server. So I'm gonna go for session and cross my fingers. I'm crossing actually all four fingers. Yeah, uh, that's the correct answer because it's kind of obvious. And what is the username of a logged on user? Uh, I don't think this is a cybersecurity question as much as it's an OSINT, maybe a little bit of detective question. So if we go to the guest book, we have like, I love your site by Adam, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we have like recent, we have to look at the recent people that actually access the website. And uh, let me see the dates. I need to be logged in. So I need to register like Hackergy, control C, control C, control whatever. Yeah, again. Okay. So now I'm logged in as Hackergy. It's funny. Because when I clicked on Hackergy, it's being displayed here. So what I wrote in the text box, just like similar to this input box, what I wrote in the input box is being displayed here. So this is something I should study later on. I don't know if it covers the challenge, but I'm just gonna study it anyway with you guys. So we go to recent and we have this picture right here. 
So this picture was uploaded on February 18 in 2009. So most probably the guy who uploaded this picture died. So I'm just going to go for, we have like Bryce and Bob. And basically, is there anyone else other than like Calvin Waters and Bryce? But this is all of them February 18. I'm just going to go for the most recent one and hope for the best. So I'm just going to go for this answer right here because on the website, the most recent post is Bryce. So let's see if that works. Do you think it's going to work, Rudy? I've got my so fingers simple. crossed. <laughs> okay, let me see. This is stupid. Okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> this is so easy. Uh, but again, it's the simple methodology that I'm telling you guys. You need to check every single detail, you know? So try and hack me. You should make these a little bit more interesting or maybe because I'm used to doing this. So right now we have a interesting username, which is Bryce. And there's something I want to test here really fast. I don't know if it's going to mean anything here, but I'm just going to check. Yeah, it's not going to mean anything. Anyway, okay. So Bryce, we need to find the password to the username. We go again with the same methodology that we did before, but this time we have to go to the users. We have to log out and uh, log in again. And we have Bryce. Well, I have a really interesting approach. If Can we register with the Bryce username and see if it works? Oh, no, no, we can't. Because sometimes there's a logical flaw where users can override other users. So we have Bryce already is here. Uh, so there's no forget password. So I'm just gonna like try the, the most stupid dumb thing you can ever try, which is Bryce. But okay. Um, yeah, apparently we we have the password for Bryce, which is funny. It was displayed okay. in the display message box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> By the way, you'll be surprised how many times I've seen this across. You, you probably think that I will not laugh at it anymore. It just catches me every time. One of the bug bounties that I found was in a company that has almost 200,000 users. And one of their admin panels was uh, try and not hack, try and not hack. These are the usernames and passwords. So it's kind of, it was, it gets me every time. So Bryce is the password. And now we've completed this stupid authentication session. And now we go into the interesting stuff. I'm just going to remind that everybody who's uh, on this session, uh, still on the session, and then you are many, uh, please, uh, if you want a certificate of attendance, uh, the link is in the chat box. Thank you. Let, let me do it. If you want a certificate of attendance that you've actually been with HackerG and actually saw HackerG doing the hacking challenge, make sure you click on that link. It will probably be good for you and you probably share it with your friends. And this way you'll spread the message of DX Talks with everyone. How was that? <laughs> that was better, than my, better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> you just hacked so, mine. <laughs> <laughs> so if Bryce wasn't the past, what can you do? Uh, to be honest, and let me just talk out really fast. What can I do? Um, you have one option, which is injection, SQL injection to see what's, basically the uh, what's basically the usernames and the database because they're probably stored in a database somewhere uh, you need to find something related to maybe access as uh, something related to the guest book where what I do is I basically let me see if this is vulnerable to XSS anyway because we're going to talk about it right now in the next session uh, and script alert zero on oh, no, and let me try something that's less annoying uh hello yes tamer maybe one of them is brute forcing and then then there's more techniques to get for this okay so if you noticed this is a very good example on what happened when i mentioned hello in my name it printed out as bold however when i mentioned in the comment hello hello too or hello too it wasn't which means they are checking for special characters within the comment box 
they are not checking it for the name part. So what I can do here is I can write an XSS script or I can write a JavaScript that whoever opens this page, let me do it really fast for you guys, which is gonna be very interesting, I guess, but it's gonna be really hard to remove. So let me just log in. Uh, Hakirji, Hakirji, I guess. Yeah, guest book. So I'm just gonna write, uh, let me see if I can delete the comment later on. I can't delete it. So every time I open, it's gonna execute. Um, what I can do is I can write an XSS script, like script. Uh, I can grab one of the scripts. So whenever anyone opens the guest book, the script will get executed and I will steal his actual cookie. And if I steal his actual cookie, what I can do is I can basically get access to his account. So this is one thing, one of the power of XSS, and uh, this is an example of a stored XSS. What I can do is I can submit a payload here. And I'm just gonna do it anyway, because for the sake of you guys learning this, it's very important. Try right? a commentary, not, not session hijacking. Yes. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to post it here. So if I refresh this page, continue, uh, it's not executing. What? Am I doing something wrong? Let me see. Submit. So something is happening. I'm not really sure if, I think it's the browser. Let me test it in Firefox. No, it's not the browser. So yeah, this, not, this one's not gonna work as well, but eventually if it was to be executed on this page, basically every single user that's gonna open this page, my payload is gonna execute and I'm gonna be stealing their cookies and sending it somewhere on the cloud. So this is one of the things of XSS. So moving on with the XSS cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Uh, XSS is a vulnerability that involves injecting malicious JavaScript and trusted websites. Once an attacker has injected mal malicious JavaScript, sometimes a browser will not know. Yes, and I will talk about beef in a second. Uh, it's not gonna know whether to trust it and to run the script using the exploit. An attacker can steal session information like cookies, just like I demonstrated. It's funny, I should have read this before I had demonstrated it. And redirect users to their own page for phishing, which is basically having a, if I want to go like really fast, like XSS redirection payload on Google and Google is your friend always. So, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, disclaimer, we, this is an educational uh, session. Yeah, I, I was just about to say that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> Again, uh, this is an educational session. This is not a hacking or there's life or we are crossing or we are hacking anybody. This is more of an education so you guys can know as penetration tester and white hackers, how do hackers know? Or as an executive, you want to hire people to do this or as a cybersecurity expert or even an admin. So again, this is a disclaimer. This is not a training of how to hack in terms of hacking, but to understand more. We know you have some capability. We've seen on the chat, some guys are already, uh, you know, they have uh, some uh, high skills uh, again, but today's session is showing you how it works. Of course, we, we're hacking a box for more of educational purposes. Yes. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So again, just don't don't try this at home. I feel like WWE, but just don't try this at home. Try it on uh, uh, try it try on it, hacker one yeah. and uh, hack the box. Yes, yeah, hack the box. Yes, but just don't try this like anywhere. So I I think it's too complicated. Like oh, no 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 no, it's JavaScript, JavaScript. Yeah, it's too complicated for this, I guess. So I'll just like uh, script. Basically, alert document dot location, and I will put my malicious link, which is https facebook.com slash hakirji.me, which is my page. If you want to go check it out. And uh, basically, I will close my script and hopefully it doesn't explode to my face. And basically, it should run and redirect you, but I think redirection is disabled here. So this is basically what you basically do 
many things and many things over and over again. So now we move on to basically one of the really cool parts of XSS. We need to test for XSS on the search bar. If you notice, the first thing I did when I went to the website is basically I tested XSS within the search bar. So we already know it's variable to XSS. There you go. So we've already did that. We've already confirmed that it's vulnerable. It's completed. Test for XSS on the guestbook page. We do have an XSS on the guestbook page because we were able to inject a HTML tag here. So this is what we've done. And test for XSS behind the flash form on the home page. This should be interesting. Let me log out. So this is the home page, I guess. And let's see if we go for the default, like send file. Of oh, okay, of course. Uh, basically, we have an XSS here, so basically, yeah, it's completed again. So these are the three main things that we checked for, and it's very interesting that we need to like tell you uh, about XSS is. We have more than one type of XSS. We have the persistent, not reflected. We have the non-persistent, reflected. We have the stored ones. We have the dome-based XSS. Uh, basically, these are different types that I'm throwing at you because I can do a whole session on XSS. So I would really recommend you searching for dome, D-O-M-based XSS, the stored XSS, and reflected XSS. Probably Google those. If you have any questions, you can always find me on my social media and all of that. And uh, you can contact Rudy if you don't have my contact information and you will probably be redirected to me. So now we finished the XSS session here. Uh, Hadi, it's probably not gonna be a lot more longer than this. It's gonna be probably like around 20 minutes, I think max, if we have the time, I'm not sure. So uh, I'm gonna try to fly through these. I don't wanna take it away from these stuff right here. So now we reach a point where we want to talk about uh, injection. Well, injection is probably the most dangerous thing you can ever have when it comes to cybersecurity because you're basically executing commands on the actual server. You're bypassing every single cybersecurity countermeasure and you're basically tapping into the server, which is very powerful. You can extract passwords, you can extract the user passwords, usernames, and all of that stuff. So for me to be able to test for XSS, I need to find my vectors. And I need to find basically my tests for this stuff. Usually XSS happens when you have a database, like let's suppose I'm just gonna try to log in. And let's see if we can find any interesting parameters here, like guest book, no recent. Okay, well, we have like PCID equal 15. Usually this is a command. Let me just take it and maybe put it a little bit in a bigger font for you guys. I'm just gonna delete this. So what does this link do? Basically what I'm telling the database is, base is I want you to get me or select the picture from pictures, which is the database for pictures, where the ID is equal to 15. This basically translates into this when it comes to SQL language. Uh, and basically, or we can do select star. Yeah, you're right. You can do select star, but if you have a specific name for it, you can do that. So, if we have this SQL query, if we add anything after that, it will cause an exception or an error. And if the developer didn't configure his application well enough, this error would be displayed telling us, well, yo, there's an issue here. So as long as I'm looking here, there's no issue, but there's something I looked into when I registered is basically what is happening uh, throughout the registration. So I'm gonna try something which is a default payload for all of the SQL injection or command injection test. So one equals to one or one basically equals to one 
which is false and we'll see how this thing pans out save hello or one equal to one let me test that again let me log out to see the behavior log in again register I'm just testing different things. Okay, this already exists, we log in. Okay, now basically what I got is I got this. And now I feel like I'm stuck a little bit. Let's see with what am I supposed to do? Like, is there a link that I need to check? Let me check the thing really fast. Expired. Your machine has expired. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to have to start it again, guys. That was not part of the plan. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely not part of the plan. Um, I was wondering why, like, this didn't work because I feel like I got stuck here. But let me just try to try to start the machine again. Let me check. Can I? It's still active. What? And we still have an hour. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. Okay, I'm just gonna like continue with the thing. Preferred command Egyptian on the check password field. What's the check password field? Let me see. Uh, if I do like, I'm not really sure. What do you think, guys? Can someone help me here? I'm a bit stuck. Because I think like in the register page, no, no, no. Let me just organize my thoughts. I have my check here. This will probably display true. And what they are asking me, perform a command injection to ch on the check password field. I already did that, I guess. Check for SQLI application. Let me see what these links do. Ah, okay, 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 okay. okay. If you noticed, this basically listed all of the users that are currently on the, in the website. Because when I do this, it's basically displaying always true. So whatever I tell him to bring me, it's always going to tell me all of the possible entries within the database. So right now I have all of the entries within the database. So technically, you were able to extract, let's say, if this was a Facebook uh, page, you were able I will to extract, extract all the users and all of the users of whoever is on Facebook, for example. Yes. Yes, exactly. So basically what we did here is let me put it down this way. Uh, if I'm telling select star from pictures where ID equal 15, what I'm doing with the or one equal to one is where it's always true. So this condition is always true. I'm getting everything from pictures and I'm displaying it in the browser, which is what's happening right here. Does that make sense? Rudy, uh, does that answer it, do you think? Uh... Yes, so you're putting the input in the in the in the tool, and then the output is coming on the website. Yeah, so basically, what's ha no, what's happening here, Rudy, is the initial registration that I registered with this string. Yes, this string means always true. True. So if I go with, let me log out and log in with Hackerji to maybe put it in better perspectives. And if I go, who's got a similar name for you? It will tell me what. There are no one with a similar username here. Why? Because it's Hakirji. What's happening here, it's on the database, it's doing this. This request is translating into this. Or oh, let me intercept it if you want. Or match it. Yes. What's happening is he's taking my username, select name from uh, names where name equals hackers right 
Yep, that's a normal. This is statement. this is how it's being translated. What's happening when I go in? When if I'm going to log out and go in with my uh, payload injection payload is when I'm clicking here. I'm replacing Hakirju with always true. So this condition is always true. So automatically it will display all of the names within the database. So I'm adding an extra condition here, which is the SQL injection, which is I'm injecting this part right here. So if name equal this or this, which is true. So it's taking this clause as true always. So it's being deleted. So I'm selecting all the names from the names and I'm displaying them here. And this is what's happening. Guys, do you, are you following me or do you want me to illustrate more on it? I really want you guys to write it down because it's very important. I want to see you guys participating. So go ahead. It makes me feel much more better about myself. If anybody has a question live, please. Sternly, you're okay? You're good? Okay. Can you check Akir's username with 101? I can do something that's better than this. I'm going to just do a quick, quick, really interesting proof of concept. Let me hope this works. I think it's already opened. Yeah. So I'm going to go with uh, 10 dot whatever forward. Okay. This is my application. I'm going to log in with Hakirji Hakirji. I'm going to log in forward. I'm inside. Okay. So now I'm going to do this. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is basically not going to work from this side. But let's suppose we had a value here that's called name equal Hakirji. What I'm doing this, I'm saying is all values. This is what's basically I'm translating my SQL injection into, and it's displaying all the values for me in the comment behind it. So this is completed and this is completed and we reach the logical flaws. So find the parameter manipulation vulnerability. We've already found it, which is the session ID. So it's a rhetoric question, I guess. Find the directory traversal vulnerability. For this, I'm just gonna use zap because I'm lazy at the moment. And I'm just gonna use that. Do you mind, Rudy? Sometimes a little bit of laziness is good. Shoot, as long as it does the job, as long as people yes. know about it. So OWASP ZAP, someone asked me about OWASP ZAP. I like to use it as a scanner, basically. And uh, the one thing that OWASP ZAP has that Burp Suite doesn't have is the capability of scanning. Uh, Burp Suite has the capability of scanning, but you need to pay for it. And as you may know, sometimes you cannot pay for everything. So let me, but I would definitely recommend you buy the pro version if you're thinking about doing this for a living. That's what I do. And I have the pro version, but it's on my different machine. So let me take the Waco Pico. And I'm just going to put the link here. And I'm just going to go with like attack. I think we have a question from Noreen. Noreen, go. Please enter a valid. Okay, URL. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. I have regarding. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can hear you, dear. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you. Sound like I would like to know regarding this SQL injection that we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, normally, uh, when we have this data, is it just me or the voice is cutting off? Noreen, your connection is not good. I don't know if you can switch or move somewhere uh, better. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but I'm like very, very, very tough to hear. Are you still here? Maybe she have a connection issue, it seems. Uh, is it clear? Yeah, yeah, no? better. Yeah, I now, now it's perfect. Now it's perfect. Oh, no, it's lagging again. Go ahead, go ahead, Noreen. 
I think we lost Nuri. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Hassan. Yes, okay. Uh, Noreen, uh, uh, I will go back to you once you're back. Uh, so yeah, definitely. So basically what OWASP did is to, he told us that we have like a bunch of XSS, which we already found manually. And it would basically make your life a lot easier. And it will show you like the same stuff that I've done. And it will tell you there's a persistent one, which where you can actually post it to the guest book and all of that. And it's not done scanning yet. So basically it's not giving me anything related to the actual challenge where the try hack me tells me I need to find a directory traversal vulnerability. So let me do something differently. Isn't this sometimes the option in the, in the web server where the directory listing or something like that, is it related to this? Uh, sometimes what it's, it's a misconfiguration on uh, different levels. What I, uh, I think uh, while scanning, I can't actually do anything related to Maybe you need some this. extra options here to, you know, extract or it doesn't. Um, from what I think, from what I personally think, I don't know why this is not working anymore. Uh, log out. I'm just going to close this one as well. Oh, yeah, because I have my burp suite in the background running. Never mind. It's, I'm stupid sometimes. Yeah. I'm just going to close everything. Close everything here. Yeah, and... a question from Khaled uh, Shab. Hi, Khaled. Hassan, do you do bug bounty for a living? Thank God, no. <laughs> because bug bounty hunting is very similar to the most unstable job you can ever have. Some people do bug bounty hunting for a living, but it's always, you'll never know if you're going to find something or not. So it's very unstable. So for me, you can be a cybersecurity professional actually in, engulfed in a really good company and do bug bounty on the side. This would make it a lot better for you guys to be able to understand more of how everything works. So you can make some extra money on the side alongside your job. This would be the perfect combination. And that is no thing that uh, Hassan is on the top list of uh, bug bounty on, on Google, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and, that's uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah, basically, I just uh, I just like to try different things, but I'm not the kind of guys that would sit around for like 10 hours. I know a really cool guys like Ahmed Halabi, Masalan, he's the number one hacker on Hacker One. He's a good friend of mine. He spends like 10, 12, 13 hours of his time on a website. I don't really like to do that. I'm more of a infrastructure, cybersecurity, high-level mentorship guy. Uh, I can do that, but I just don't think at this stage of my life, I need to be doing bug bounty for a living because I have a stable job and thank God I'm basically progressing within the cybersecurity realm. So it depends on what you love to do, basically. I love to teach people. I love to introduce my knowledge and all of that stuff. So basically, I'm just going to check the upload function. I have to be logged in. So I'm just going to log in as I could you again. And your uploaded pics. I don't have any uploaded pics, but I can upload this. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go with a hackerji tag. What the, the most common directory traversal and what we call directory traversal is let's suppose we have this link right here. I'm just gonna post it back in the verb suite because it's clearer for you guys. We have this thing. What directory traversal is basically this website is the www public website this translates into this, okay? This is a folder within this directory, and this is a file within this folder. So this is how basically you need to look at the server architecture. What's happening now is what I feel like I wanna do. I wanna see if the default check for, uh, for basically uh, directory traversals and all of that is just adding double quotes, a double points and a slash. So let me try this. Let me try this. So if I wanna go for the tag, let's suppose like this Hakirji or yeah, I can go for pictures maybe. 
to check if there's a directory traversal on the picture side. And I will say file name is called uh, hackerg.php, whatever. And the title is hackerg, and the price is one, two, three. And I don't know, let me see if I can upload any file that's PHP here or whatever, like install it, sage upload file. Okay, so something was wrong. So let me double check it again. We go for like double dots pictures and let's go for the default conflict, which is the default thing for testing this. And we go for like conflict, whatever. One, two, three, and like, let me let me try something like, there's something in PHP, which is interesting, PHP page download. You can test it. And this is some like really advanced stuff, but you can just go for it and download it like PHP info file. And basically we create a file here empty file, which is the info.php, we open it, we have this in it, we close it, and we see if this would work. Desktop, php info.php and upload file. Okay. So now I think I have a hit somewhere. Let me go back. I think I did something that's weird, but let me just check really fast what I did. I was able to upload this. And now basically what I can do, I can upload any payload that I have using PHP and have it being executed live. So for me, this is more than enough for a directory traversal. Find a forceful browsing vulnerability. Let's see what are we going to do with uh, forced browsing. We need to enumerate basically to check what forceful browsing. We need to use Fuff. Uh, what does, does the hint, what does the hint says on the, on the on the one that just completed? Check the picture. Upload PHP page. Okay, okay. Uh, there's a hint thing. Man, you should have mentioned that. Thank you, Rudy, I guess. <laughs> Man, okay. I'm um, just gonna go use Fuff. Okay, Fuff is basically a directory brute force solution. So what I'm gonna do with Fuff is I'm gonna choose a word list which user share Ben, 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 yes. Rocky, hopefully it's here. Rocky, what's... Okay, where's my cybersecurity list? Security checklist, yes. And now I have like discovery or fuzzing. I go for fuzzing. And then I basically go for, um, let me see, do I have anything other than fuzzing? Hold on, just a second. Let me go for discovery. Uh, web content. Web, I think you have to write it like discovery, web content. And I have like default enumerations word list for common, like I don't go for common.txt. And I put on the link uh, of Basically, we call Waco Pico this little beautiful thing. Do you have a, a syntax error in the common, or I'm mistaken? Where? Common. Uh, Is it the right name? Yeah, yeah, it's it's the right name because I okay. I think it's written wrong. It's written wrong on my PC. Okay. So let's see what's happened. Uh, Boom, boom, boom. It's a huge error. Okay, encountered error. Uh, we need to specify the message which is post or get. So let me just check it really fast because usually, uh, 
Uh, just a second, really fast, guys. Just a really quick second. I'm just going to check it on my decompiler because usually it's just... Uh, so as you see, guys, you know, uh, hacking is not a just one thing, one one hit, one one. It's so many things that goes in the mind and, and the tools and the techniques. You know, sometimes you can solve it in multiple ways, but only one way is the right way sometimes. Yeah, there's like there's okay. Let, I think I think I'm using the wrong tool for this because uh, usually you need to take like Google.com. Let's suppose if I want to test it, and my minus U, it's basically. Uh, let me check more further here. So we have our website HTTP. I think I have an error somewhere here. Let me check really fast. Minus U, HTTP, google.com. It's still like, but not found in headers, methods. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I got it because, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let me just do this the other way. I'm sorry I'm spending some time on this, but. Uh, I think it's interesting to show it to you. Um, so basically, if someone can just do a little bit of assistance here, because okay, like it's X post still not working. I don't think I think my fuff is basically broken for some weird reason. Let me check. I'm, I'm going to have to minimize it a little bit, guys, just to see the error. Sorry for that. Again, this is the beautiful of live hacking. So, uh, okay, minus U flag or minus minus request flag is requested. So I'm adding the minus U flag here to google.com. What's the other issue here? Keyword fuzz defined, but not found in headers, methods or post requests. So basically I need to add Oh, yeah, 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 no, 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 stupid, bro. I'm just stupid. Uh, what FUS does is basically you have to give it a terminology here to actually use these words here and replace them here. So this basically should work fine now, hopefully. Let me check what's the error now, because I'm about to shoot myself. Uh, I think, by the way, this is going to be funny for you, Rudy. <laughs> I think, I think, I'm not sure. Let me check. Don't get too excited. Wait. Uh, so common. Uh, what do I have here? Like just some common.txt. Yeah. Thank you, Rudy. And thank you, Tamar. <laughs> okay, now you'll probably see the <laughs> Yeah, well, it happens, it happens. This is the normal. beauty of life hacking. I thought the issue was mine. Yeah, no, but I wasn't. have a question. How do you, you know, okay, you cannot memorize everything. So do you yeah. have a, a workflow to, you know, safeguard some of those? Uh, uh, well, it's basically, it, it depends on how... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to laugh at this. Okay, so uh, what I would recommend people is store your stuff in places where you will know how to access them really fast. Okay? Yeah. Like, this is why I immediately, when I was typing, I just went for security list, discovery, web contents, blah, 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 blah. So you can store it at any folder you want and you will always access it really fast. Yeah. So if you noticed... We have like a really interesting stuff here that happened. We have Can you maximize again. Yes. Uh, zoom in. Sorry. Yeah. We have a bunch of directories that we can actually see now, which are cart, which are action, which are admin, which are CGI bin, which are, which are, which are. So I'm going to just going to try to go through. And these. these are at the remote server, just as a yes. reminder. Yes. This is forbidden because it's 403. But what we do now is just we test them to see what kind of things. Uh, we found the admin by mistake. If I would have done FUF at the beginning, 
I probably would have been able to access it. Uh, I will go for action now. It's not found. Uh, we have the cart. Okay, now this is the directory traversal that I was talking to you about. So now we can go to the parent directory, which is the main website, but these are basically the stuff that are available here. And basically, uh, we're gonna examine that later on. We have the comments and we have like add comment or delete comment or preview comment, whatever. So and we, we can get all the codes now. Yes, exactly. Service status. We have the service status. Uh, I've been, we went through that. We go for service uh, status. Hassan, I had a question yes. on WhatsApp and then I asked Abdullah to rejoin. Yes, definitely. Uh, where do we start in cybersecurity? Just a quick, oh. a quick, quick, you know, uh, we don't uh, give it. Where do we start? We start from starting with the OWASP top 10, we start to go with each topic and do a lot of reading. And then we go watch some tutorials. Any tutorials would be good for you guys. And then go for try and hack the box. Uh, try to do these small tests, these small commands, understand these different tools. And after all of that is set up in your mind, you try to go for the second second step, which is actually attempting bug bounty hunting, trying and error, watching other people writings about bug bounty hunting, this would help you a lot. This is for me the best way to start. And what now. is the one language you must learn? Um, one, I know I there's many. Uh, I know like 10 languages. I'm not good at 10 languages, but I know 10 languages. Um, I think Python is the way to go. Python right now is just dominating everywhere. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with Python. So and I, I think, think Python also learning uh, SQL language is- As, these, are, these are by default. You're yeah. gonna have to know these by default. Like you cannot talk about SQL without mentioning Python, HTML, PHP, whatever. So there's a million technology out there. You have to just understand how they function and you have to understand how the coding and the logic functions. So thank you. you. Know? Abdullah, I hope I was uh, and Hassan able to answer you. Uh, in a better way. Thank you. So if you notice right now, I just found this really cool document or this really cool folder where it has like a bunch of... Uh... Oh, by the way, this is the PHP file that I uploaded on the server, if you remember, guys, where it has the PHP info. So now Basically, I can... yeah, I can call it and I can do all sort of interesting stuff. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> what do what are they doing here? Playing oh, it's, it's the same picture twice. What the hell? So Twister, uh, same yeah. picture four times. Never mind. <laughs> We're so gonna get bad for this. So basically, uh, we got. Come on, <laughs> I'm just checking files. Yeah, basically, you have to check every file to see if there's any interesting information there. Uh, but I think I caught the attention of all the guys in the in the Zoom meeting. So. Now we're gonna have to go back to the challenge to see what we did. So we did find it. Let's try to get an item for free. Let's see. Item for free. Let me go back to the way. This, this should be interesting because one time I got a TV from Amazon from, for free and I reported it to them and they didn't send me a TV. They just gave me $200 for that, which was sad. Um, we have to go to cart. So go find some pictures. I need to add something to my cart right now. Uh, what the? Okay, never mind. I'm gonna add this house. Add to cart, and enter a coupon code. How do I find a coupon code? If I want to get it for free, it's sixteen trade bucks. So let's see. I want to check something. I found here, which is, uh, I think it was upload. Let me check it out. I saw something related to um, coupon. Yeah, add coupon card. So there's nothing interesting here. There's a PHP file. Yeah, there's only a PHP file. I cannot download it. I don't think I can, I don't know. Let me check. Is there anything at that? open 
Oh, oh, I can. Nice. Uh, okay, so I just want to take this away. I want to down the add coupon. Okay, save link as. Download. So now I have two files that I need to look at. We go for the add coupon. It's empty. Nice. And we go for the confirm. Okay, so let's see if there's anything interesting here. Uh, coupon, coupon, coupon. High quality. There's this key, which I don't know what's what it is. Uh, you can add coupon as admin. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Man, I love it when people are following. Thank you, Tamar. If you remember, we basically have admin access, right? Okay, why is it this not working now? There's no fudge file. I'll log in, I guess. Login.php. Okay, so we have admin admin, which is the flag we got earlier create a new user. We can't add a new coupon, bro. What's wrong with you? Balafne. <laughs> well, he doesn't know. Balafne. Okay. Maybe you can play in the, in the PHP page now. Yeah, I'm just gonna check the uh, coupon file. Uh, let me just organize my thoughts a little bit really fast. Uh, so I want to check the PHP file again, bro. I, I just think there's something here because it was so awkward. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. It means so confirm your purchase. It was an uh, add coupon PHP file. There Let is a link. Maybe see. there's a link here. HTTP pictures, high quality and key. What's this let's see if this means anything in the browser we just uh, take this down let me put this here i can really okay oh no there's nothing here um slash uh, coupon in the file to search in it yes coupon Nothing here. There's no coupon here. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, Where does the hint takes us? I'm I'm guessing I'm I'm guessing I'm overcomplicating this. Let me just get an item for free. What's the item that I'm trying to get? Let's see. Just let me go back to the basics for a second. So cart. Um, these are basically like this website where I can download pictures, I think. Or I can just get pictures. This cost me six trade bucks. So because um, I'm adding, let's suppose this one to the cart and this one to the cart. Oh, oh no, hello, I'm no execution. Um, and this one to the cart, add to cart. So I wanna check, let me see if I can confirm this. Continue to confirmation. Okay, so I have like these three. What is purchase? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Fianda key zone. No, 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 there, this, is, this is the flag. Okay, this is the problem. What you basically, what you buy here on the websites are pictures. And if you click here, it's a low quality picture, right? And you're buying the high quality picture. So what you can do, this is the error here, what you can take this link and get the high quality picture. So I'm getting an item for free. Let me check the hint because it doesn't make sense to me, but this is the only way it's gonna make sense. What about discount codes? Really? Purchase. If I click on it, does someone understand what the hell is happening here? 
Can you try the the hint uh, button? What does it say? Maybe it guide us back to the. It did. It did. It did. No, actually, sorry. like, what about discount codes? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Add underscore coupon. Let me check this one right here. Card. Let me add coupon. Oh no, I already, I already downloaded this. This was empty. Action.php. Save. Yeah, it's empty as well. I think this is the solution for some weird reason. Uh, let me let me see. There's is there any solutions here to actually like look at? I'm just gonna check the solution because right now it's it's eight thirty and I don't wanna like keep you hanging on the last one and hopefully it works. Oh, so even the solution is not working, man. Try to get an item for free. Um, what about the discount code? What are the numbers when you check out? Let me check out again. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, go find some pick. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, definitely. Just like I said. Uh, welcome to your car, Takerji. You don't have a card. Go find some pictures, which means I'm shopping for pictures here. Yeah, as you said. Right? So if I'm shopping for pictures, uh, I'm adding this to cart, and um, basically, I'm adding this to cart as well. And, I think you. I think um, you opened the link just a couple of minutes back. Because the final product yeah, is yeah, the yeah. picture. Yeah. I want to check really fast. Like how many, I have 39 tickets, right? I have 39 bucks here that are available for me. So I should not be able to buy these, right? Mm -hmm. So if I click on continue to confirmation. Open one of I want to, uh, I'm going to open all of these and I click on purchase. You don't have enough money. Right. However, I already got access but to the this pictures. is a high resolution. This is a high resolution picture. So you got the so product. this is a logical flow. So I got the product. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's the only way it makes sense. So basically, I'm probably the guy that took the most time to complete the Stuka challenge in the world. <laughs> For your convenience, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, guys. So basically, that's basically the entire thing. It took us a little bit a long time, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, it wasn't really that hard, but I was trying to be very walking with your baby steps so I can just give you as much information as possible regarding how I worked. And of course, this video is going to be recorded. So you probably get to see all of these information again in slow motion. And of course, I think this is, will be a great video. And I really enjoyed this video. It, it came out like really good. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, I'm... Um, Open for the next 10 minutes, if you want, or five minutes. Yeah. Depending on Rudy's... Uh, it's time for questions. Rudy's time. Thank, yes. you, uh, thank you, Hassan, for this uh, demonstration. I think it was uh, uh, a little bit uh, uh, here and there, but uh, more or less, we were able to work on a workflow. Yes. But if you don't mind, uh, for now, sharing, uh, stop sharing, so in case there's a yes. another question, so the guys can see us and then interact. It's time for you to interact with us. So, well, good to see you guys again. <laughs> Assalamualaikum. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, yeah, can. I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, thank you very much. I was actually uh, looking at that SQL injection that you were talking about a little bit yes. back in the workflow. Uh, normally, when we have this distributed query uh, for distributed databases, where the database is located into different locations, depending yes. on on the you know the location specific information so yes. normally when we write uh, the code and the query we we do it in c language uh, mm -hmm. on unix or linux and then we have embedded sql queries in there yes right so if that injection is done into uh, the sql code will that get translated into the because the query itself get distributed uh, once it goes down well uh, are, locations. are we taking are we so speaking about it be distributed? Are, are we speaking about a nested query in this case will that injection 
are we speaking about a nested mm, query in this nested case? Nested or... query, yeah, yeah. With that embedded, no, not nested, embedded query. Okay. Uh, that embedded query is SQL code. And suppose a, in that code an injection had happened, normally this uh, embedded query, it gets distributed according to the location uh, when it gets translated. Uh, okay. You know, yeah, I got, I got the question. I got the so question. Will this code will also be distributed. I got your question. You, uh, basically, Adisa. your question is related that if we have multiple databases scattered across the scene, will, if I was trying to inject, will this query execute even if the database were located in different locations? Isn't that a question? Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, it will definitely get executed for two reasons. The first reason is the query itself is structured within the post request. So an injection will actually make the query behave normally. It will get distributed. However, you're gonna have to find the right injection point not to cause an exception within the query itself. Like sometimes if we have a query that has two tables, each one is located in a different database, you're gonna have the perfect injection point as you can see, I was adding at the end of the sentence. Uh, I, I was adding my payload at the end of the injection point. So you're gonna have to find the right positioning for that injection point for it to be executed. It's very similar to having a blind SQL injection, if you know what I mean. But uh, personally, I have not seen a lot of these cases out there because usually you don't have distributed databases for simple queries. And if it's vulnerable for one, it's probably vulnerable for all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Nice question, by the way. Will, can you share your uh, workflow with baby steps with us? I yeah, definitely. I will. Uh, I will. Space with you, but I kind of got lost. It's okay. Uh, basically, I will send the Rudy a uh, document, which is the best practice for penetration testing web application. I'll probably send it either by tonight or by tomorrow morning because I have it somewhere on my computer. And this is basically a document that you guys can keep. It's like what you start by doing and how you progress throughout your penetration test. So I think this will help you a lot. Plus take a note of the information you use, you probably make sense of it. I was like more uh, interested in uh, while you were, you know, while you got stuck and you're trying different things and, uh, yeah. You were also voicing your thoughts. So there were a lot of information. I was trying to jot it down, but it was too quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I one of the of, things. That's yeah. one of the things with Rudy. Like we said, mm. how am I going to do a live hacking challenge without pausing, without thinking? Because yes. uh, I told Rudy, I don't like to cheat. I don't like to look at the answers. So I'm just going to do it live with you guys. So how do I get that information? Uh, this this is recorded and it's going to be posted okay. on YouTube. So okay. all of the information are going to be there for you. Yeah. Mohammed, same you. same thing. Uh, thank you, Noreen. Uh, we will repost it on uh, YouTube later on, and then we will send you also. Be part of our WhatsApp uh, group so you can get. Yeah, I joined your group. Alhamdulillah. Thank nice you very one. much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we'll take the final end question actually before we conclude. Yeah. Uh, if it's a short one, we'll take another one. Otherwise, anybody okay. wants to volunteer for a question? Can we do CTF next session? CTF, um, Rudy, we'll, we'll talk about it. Follow, wait, wait, it's this way. Follow Hassan Shukur. He's live on twitch.tv slash hackergylb and facebook.com slash hackergy.me. Exactly. So, uh, and you can buy my merch. That's the most important <laughs> part. Do you have the link to buy your merch? Uh, I'm releasing the link by next week. So, okay. So, so you've got some, some, new, there some is, new stuff. There is one question uh, also posted. I would also like to know the answer to that. Sure. What yeah, sure. It? Go ahead, Nori. Chat. That browsing, internet browsing question. Oh, yeah, yeah. How can we browse? internet also our families without our computers and phones getting hacked your advice and best practices Hassan, the best Hassan, practice before, before before you continue i want the yeah. first one signed done <laughs> done done right. man so whatever you, you also uh, the link to the merch and then don't forget to, to follow him on twitch 
uh, he he actually shares more information and then he has some other uh, sessions. So please do follow him. And also on LinkedIn, which I shared. Uh, and YouTube, YouTube, Hakirji, YouTube, YouTube yes. Hakirji, don't forget. Yeah, uh, YouTube, YouTube. Is I'll, I'll, I'll send them now in, Definitely. The, in the chat. Uh, for me, the best advice I can give you to browse the internet safely is don't browse the internet. <laughs> it's that simple. I can tell you for a fact, it's... It's a disaster lately. We there's over seven zero day vulnerabilities that were discovered in the past 24 hours. So just every company in the world, Apple, Android, uh, Google, whatever you want, there's nothing that's 100% secure. Just be responsible and don't put too much data in places where data should not be put. This is what the only thing that I can try to tell you. Um, again, there's nothing that's called complete and this is a question that we can have a talk maybe later on about awareness we can have something with rudy about it because it's going to take like hours of discussion and maybe we'll have another panelist and we'll have a discussion like pro technology what's the future of cyber security we can have that with rudy hopefully soon yes definitely all righty so uh we'll take the last last question also uh, I just posted uh, Hassan uh, YouTube and uh, Twitch. Yes. Also, do follow us on uh, our channel. Also, uh, that way you'll keep on uh, uh, you keep connected with uh, with both of us. And most importantly, if you like Twitch, uh, Hassan doesn't stay. Uh, you know his nights are, are long nights, so you can yeah. follow him live there. Also. <laughs> I never sleep. I never <laughs> sleep. Okay, so anyone have any more questions to ask? Um, last question. Last question to go. Make it count. A la uno, a la due, a la tre. I think everyone is answered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Hassan. It was really a beautiful uh, live uh, session hack, or actually live hacks. No, Khaled. We, yes, we have weekly sessions, but not live hacking Wouldn't sessions. They? We have uh, <laughs> next week. We will be live uh, from uh, from uh, Jitex. Uh, you know, uh, talking about what's happening in Jitex. We'll be hosting different people. We're gonna have a uh, maybe Tuesday uh, an NFT NFT with uh, Cristel uh, uh, Bishara. She's the first lady who went into non fungible tokens in the crypto world. And we have our weekly talk, uh, Crypto uh, Crypto uh, Wednesdays. Uh, join Stay. us uh, and be you know once you follow us on all of these channels you stay uh, uh, updated and especially on, uh, on, on on whatsapp so uh, thank you uh, Khaled thank you Joe thank you Noreen thank you can I do much. the outro Rudy sure wait wait, okay. wait 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 let me highlight you here we go uh, yes, yes, yes. no one second let me I love this I love this the floor is yours Thank you everyone for joining the XOX. For more information about the group, you can always find the links online. Make sure you follow the WhatsApp group. Make sure you go on YouTube. Make sure you follow us everywhere because we have weekly meetings for you guys. Very interesting topics coming up every week. Your Suri Rudy Shushani is building an empire and it starts with you guys. Make sure you support him. Make sure you follow us. I might be crashing Jitex next week. Enjoy it. Have a great night. And don't forget, always stay positive and always be happy and always be eager to learn. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful, <laughs> energetic. I was on the edge of my seat. Thanks. So much. I hope Rudy it was. Uh, I, th it was I hope it was uh, very, you know, interactive. So you can you know, because this this topic could go technical and. It go. was very enjoyable. In fact, I was thinking. I don't know. Maybe I'll sleep. But I didn't. I was like on the <laughs> brink. <laughs> so Hassan made it very energetic and very enjoyable. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. I, think sure. I, can, I can wet my feet in yeah. this area. Make sure to share on all of uh, the social media. And thank you again. Thank you. Yes, sure. What's the name of the session? This session or which session? This session is was about uh, life hacking. We had a drone, one about drones, the uh, future of drones. So, Rudy, the form which you shared is in Arabic. Uh, no no it's actually in english no it is coming in arabic so uh, i am trying to because type, you're, you're from uh, going from amman right yeah okay um I, I, connect with me and then i'll uh... okay yeah uh, okay, there, sure. is there a form yes if you want to get a, a certificate of attendance 
uh, sternly. Uh, yes, I'll share it again. And uh, here you go. Before the, before the name, what are we supposed to fill in? That, uh, that field is in Arabic. The form is oh, asking name. session this name. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Ah, the session name. It's uh, live hacking, if you want, whichever you want to name it. We will fix it later on on the certificate. It's fine. It's okay. It starts yeah. with your email. And uh, anyhow, just connect with me, and then we'll, we'll figure it out, uh, Noreen. Because uh, I think I have around 30, uh, uh, 30 people that have... Uh, requested those requested this uh, we had just for the numbers uh ins and outs uh you know people coming and coming uh, and going we had constant 50 we had 123 people in and out so uh yeah that was a great session thank you love you rudy son. love you rudy as always we'll talk and then we'll see you later bye-bye guys thank you bye-bye so Thank you again, Hassan. As you see, uh, that was uh, our live educational uh, session for you to be able to, you know, learn more, understand more what happens behind the scene and uh, how, uh, you know, Hassan was able to capture the challenges that he faced also because there's challenges. It's not straight through. So thank you uh, for being with us. Don't forget uh, to uh, join our social media. And with that, we want to wish you a good night and thank you and see you uh wednesday on crypto talks live